Hi girls. Yeah, okay, well we've got these uh, this brand new piston out, which will go into an engine soon enough. Because no doubt there's gonna be someone that hasn't done the recommended maintenance because they haven't found me yet. Uh, they don't understand any of the problems because they're busy in their life doing all the things that people do and that's completely understandable. It's always wise to research and learn about your vehicle. If you, I mean, you know, if you just got a little run around, you just go to work and back and it's not a big deal, but when you're running a four wheel drive for touring the outback, there's a lot more maintenance involved and it's it's imperative that it's reliable depending where you go. For us, where we go, um, we need absolute reliability. That's why we choose the vehicles we do. Now, with the pistons, this was more about um, trying to explain to you, um, well, not in detail, but some revisions and what some of the numbers mean. We'll just go for one of the numbers in this video, okay? So, uh, 2000 and is when the 1KD FTV was first in Australia in Hiluxes for anyone that didn't know so yes they're in the Hilux first 2005 Euro 3 didn't have the EJR cooler quite a good little reliable engine and people sort of go oh you know oh that's why they don't crack pistons because you know like those ones were better and, uh, and for this reason and that reason well let me tell you why you don't hear about many Euro 3s cracking pistons. It's quite simple, really. Just, I mean, you know, you know, I, I, sorry guys, I made a video. It was called Think, 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 Think. So after this one, please go and search and watch that one. Please think, okay? Because some people don't like that in the way I said it, but this is the problem these days. And it doesn't matter what subject we're talking about, people just don't think and they don't want to know. And you know the best part or the worst part? They don't listen to warnings i can give you a warning i'm warning you if you do this or don't do it, this is what's going to happen and they yeah i'll be right mate should be right. people don't take warnings don't work okay so let me change it to you this way if you take my advice if you subscribe turn the bell on watch all the videos do the cert oil when i say the filters do the injectors do this and that follow my procedures that's your best chances of reliability and in the long run it's going to save you a lot of money. Let me explain it this way. Maybe in a few years you'll have an extra 10 grand in your bank account. So it's going to pay off. That's because maybe you won't need one of these. Right? Okay. So, why did the Euro 3, the early Hilux? Well, it's simple. Like I said, just think about a Hilux. For a start, it's much smaller and lighter. A standard Hilux, you know, it's narrower, it's lower. You look at the front of a Hilux compared to a Prado, a lot of those vehicles, they're utes as well. They get used. They only get used for, um, you know, uh, you know, their tradies cars running around town. So they don't do the same sort of Ks. Um, there is Hiluxes people set up, but I'd say there's just not that many of them. So that's the first part. There's not that many of them compared to what happened since then. It just exploded. There's heaps of Pradas and Hiluxes, mate. You know, best selling, uh, best selling car ring a bell sort of thing, and best cars on the road. You know, I'll say that part. But uh, best seller in, I can tell you, you know, best vehicle. So, <coughs> excuse me, that allergy going off all year round, I reckon. Some days worse than others, but terrible. And yeah, I don't really pop pills or anything like that, so it doesn't really help, does it? So, there's not many of them. They're only in high luxes from 05 till about mid 06, so such a short period of time. Now, they don't have an EGR cooler. They have less EGR flow. Well, maybe that helps. But the main thing is the vehicle's small and light. It's a, generally a small light vehicle. All the Euro 3s I've ever seen, when they come in for injectors, they're small and light. They go like rocket ships because they're small and light. They don't usually do the big outback trips, the long trips that the Prados are doing towing caravans. You know what I mean? You, you get the picture I'm trying to put for you. So usually, the, the Hiluxes we see that have cracked pistons, it's not chips and tunes. It's all chips and tunes. We already talked about that in another video, right? So if you haven't seen that one, it's probably called, I don't know, uh, Remap Problem or Problem with a Remap. Just go Remap. Search on our channel, Remap or Tune or Chip. See what you get. Watch them all. Right? See if any of it makes sense to you. So, um, so you know, there wasn't many of them. They're small and light. They don't have an EGR cooler. That may help a little bit. It was nothing to do with the pistons being better or anything like that. Um, first piston was an 040, as far as I know, from all the engines I've seen, with the head off, with cracked pistons. Um, yeah, first one, see where this number 110, 
So this is a bit different. They changed the manufacturing process as well, where this is a print. So when these have got carbon all over them, you clean it, you sometimes rub this off. So you've got to be careful you don't rub that off. It can be quite hard to see, but I suppose this is a good video so you know where to look at least, right? You know where the 110 is because it used to be engraved onto the piston. The 040s, 080s, it was engraved in, right? It was machined in, if you like, so you couldn't just clean it off. So, 040s, nothing wrong with those. And then there was a revision to make them stronger because obviously they had some issues when you do millions of engines around the world and there is millions of 1KDs. Um, something's something's got to give, right? You know, in the one in a million or whatever it is, right? One in a thousand, one in 10,000. We don't know the numbers, right? It's certainly small numbers, but something's got to give. And the good thing about Toyota, they're known and that's what they've done from the start for their research, their engineering, their they'll go back through and investigate to find the root cause of the problem. And I mean the root, you know, that last little tip at the end and sort it out so it doesn't happen again. So they had a revision, that's as much as we know. They had a revision to an 080, which was meant to be stronger. It's not saying there's a problem with it. It's not a problem with the piston because if there's millions of them out there and they don't, most of them don't crack, it's not, it's not a problem with a piston, right? It's not like, a, if there's a problem and they're all crap, then they all crack, they all crack, they all crack eventually. Most of them haven't. Most of them are 15 years old, right? They've done hundreds of thousands of Ks. A lot of them with original injectors and blow-by. The reason the engines fail is those seats never got changed. The lack of lubrication, which is, you know, it's all part of it. What do you reckon comes out these holes here? Have a look around, right, you know? So oil cooling as well. You need good oil. Oil is not just about um, lubrication. It's also, you gotta have good, clean flow of the right oil for cooling, you know? Every little, every little factor adds together and helps prevent when you've got an engine that's maxed out think of it that way you've got a four-cylinder diesel engine that's maxed out think of it you know you, you drive it it seems to do it so easy that's not what that's not what this bloke's thinking right here he's not going mate you might have thought it was easy with your little right toe uh, you know but no no it wasn't easy for him right he's doing this bloke's doing all the work and he's only got three other mates you know and you know they're not they're not really there's not that much of them so anyway so they went to an 080 and of course you know a couple of pistons still cracked and I'll say a couple because that's it's a couple here and a couple there. With the internet these days, it's all it's all bad news. But if there's one, you'll hear about it. If there's two, you'll hear about it. Stop and think about it though. If you hear about five in a year or ten in a year, ten out of how many million? Like whatever. It's so small, it's not funny. But but there's a but there, right? The 080s, they still had a few cracks, so of course they went at it again, and they probably made changes without even telling us about it. But then. In 2014, we believe, and we've seen these pistons in, for anyone that watches the videos and trying to prevent questions, I'll add this in. I have seen these pistons in a July 2014 built engine, right? It was only two and a half years old when it had a cracked piston. Again, can you guess? Can you guess? At 100,000 Ks, can you guess? Yes, it had a Steinbauer chip on it for 20,000 Ks, okay? So... We've seen these pistons in engines. I'll try and take more notice. Um, it'd be good if anyone that really cared, you know, engine care type people, if they cared, they could tell us, yeah, we've done uh, dozens of these or hundreds. I mean, no lies, just honesty. Just tell us how many 1KDs you've really done if you rebuild engines and tell us what month and year manufacturer vehicle, not the engine, the vehicle, have you seen 110 pistons? Because obviously if you rebuild engines, you've done more than me. Okay, if that's what your profession is, I don't profess to be the engine rebuilder, engine replacer. I'm the engine saver. I'm here to save your engine. I'm not the one that's encouraging you to leave your injectors there and it's not that. And get a chip and a tune, it'll be fine. Because I can sell you engines. I'm going to make more money out of replacing your engine than injectors. I've said it before. If you want to go that way, happy to do that. When you crack your piston, give me a text message, you know, the name, the vehicle details, and we'll look into it. We'll sort out, help you out best we can, get you the best engine for what you can afford. And there's other ways that sometimes we can get things covered. That's why it's always worth, I think, doing the maintenance right, doing the prevention, finding the information, being in the VIP group, and you get looked after when, hopefully, you know, worst case scenario. We'll do, all I can promise is I'll do the best I can to help you get out of that situation best you can. And I'm gonna remind you now, RAC Total Care. You need your towing. You need to be able to get places, okay? It's gonna be a big inconvenience if it happens. But if you do your prevention, you're most likely gonna be right. So 2014, we believe they did another revision where the document says to make the piston more robust, more robust, stronger. So they're trying to make it stronger. Again, it's kind of like, 
it's a band-aid thing, right? When you've got an engine that's too small and you've got this big Prado with a bull bar and big tyres lifted up, bash plates, roof racks, boats, but more to the point, caravans, and you're doing the long haul kilometres where it's constantly pumping hard and this bloke's getting hammered, you know, and the injectors aren't done or they're out of spec or you've got your chip or tune. It's always these reasons. But the point I'd like to make is that's the go, 110. In Australia, I believe that's the last one we got. Um, I, I reckon I believe, uh, remember reading something, I'd have to check it again, about a 130. Because the 1KD, I believe, continued overseas in other countries, even though we got the 1GD. Um, I believe the 1KD was uh, and 130 piston, and I believe they, they, there was a cracked one of those, which is why I heard about that. You know, people share information. They sort of, they know who I am, you know, whatever, you know, it all links up, and they go, oh, check this one out. 2017 1KD, 130 piston, and it's cracked, right? So just putting it out there, guys. If Toyota can't make an indestructible piston, the root cause of the problem is, I'll tell you, the engine's too small for the vehicle, okay? Now, everything needs to be running right. Mickey Mouse... You know, no chips, no tunes, injectors right, everything like that, if you want to be in the clear, okay? If you get fuel contamination, you can't control that. That is very rare. Usually the injectors handle a little bit of moisture. Not too bad. Some people will disagree with that, but it doesn't matter. Hopefully you got something out of that again, guys. If you did, please give us the thumbs up so I know I'm giving you the right information. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Turn the bell on because we've got heaps more information coming your way. Thanks for watching. See ya. Sorry I had to tell you all over again.